OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, this presentation, we're going to be talking about um, kind of <clears throat> sort of looking back on what happened um, during the pandemic at the beginning and the lessons that we had learned from that and why um, digital navigators were really uh, instrumental in addressing what was going on at the time um, uh, immediately after the lockdown period. Um, and um, so anyway, my name is Jerry um, with World Education, Senior Technical Advisor, formerly at Highlands Community Charter Technical Schools, which is why I know so much about the um, OTAN community and, uh, and from, uh, you know, uh, across California. Um, and then with me is Maria. Hello, good afternoon, Maria Carrasco. I'm currently a CTE teacher at Highlands and I currently teach the Digital Navigator Pathway. So um, part of this is gonna go into uh, what our adult learners go through in the pathway and then kind of what the job is like as well for us at Highlands. For everybody, the digital navigator role could be different, you know, depending on if you're a school, a hospital, uh, a community organization. So it depends what we're gonna go through, um, what it looks like, what it looks like for us at Highlands. Uh, yeah, so we had a quick activity set up. Uh, normally, it's more fun with more people, but if you want to uh, participate, um, that would be cool. Go ahead and scan this. Uh, it should bring up a text box for you to enter um, your response, and then we'll look at the, the replies on, on the word cloud. I want to do pressure. Hey, is that going on? Okay. <laughs> Don't tell me everyone is from Sacramento. Yes? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, right. Okay. So we're all from like, this. Is like, <laughs> Possibly the worst vehicle <laughs> for <laughs> engagement <laughs> for people all from the same town. I'm not. I need to get to the canyon, so <laughs> not from Sacramento. <laughs> okay, so let's okay, we'll skip that. That's uh, we'll, we'll try that at a different uh, venue. Uh, <laughs> Who would have predicted that? <laughs> All the people in California, everyone's from Sacramento, except for one. Where are you from? I, I teach here and in El Camino. So this is your- This is my classroom. This is your uh, class? Yeah. yeah. Gosh, well, thank you for letting us use it. I'm happy to have <laughs> Awesome. So we're going to talk about um, what a digital navigator is and how a uh, unique community digital navigator CPE program that we, we built um, might be able to help your agency. Um, when, we, when we talk about that, and I'll get into what that really means, but it's a way that you can address digital literacy goals, uh, instructional technology objectives, um, and just general technical support um, for all of your students and even some, some staff. So when we look back at the COVID-19 pandemic, um, gosh, I mean, you guys all remember it, right? Like what happened March 13th? Oh my gosh, well now we're completely shut down. And what I think a lot of districts, a lot of schools, they discovered that the access to technology was tough and also that the existing digital literacy levels were challenging, right? Um, you know, and, and so how do we do that, especially when now we can't even be in the room together, okay? But 
when things like that happen, crisis often breeds innovation. And so we saw that happening all the time, right? Early on, you heard about the stories like beer makers and distilleries starting to make hand sanitizer, right? Um, 3D people, companies using 3D printers to make ventilator parts or, or you know, even the whole machine. So we saw an opportunity at that time to innovate as well to try to solve a problem, a gap that was being created. But first, um, yeah, so first, this is really going, this is going to really address this article that I wrote for the Coed Journal. And the, the biggest piece of that was what I wanted to do was conduct a review of what was happening, not only in the United States, but around the world in this, in this area. And it was really, you know, at times tough because it was new. Um, but I wanted to look at not only the, the COVID-19 response, but what was kind of happening in that general time period with digital learning, distance learning, and stuff like that. So this is going to inform and look looking at that through the lens of educational technology. Um, we all know at that time, even pre-COVID-19, that many schools were really on their way to reaching one-to-one -one objectives if that was what was happening with their school, which is what most schools were doing. Um, but at the same time, even though access increased, um, students were still having difficulties of their own. And it that was just exacerbated by the COVID-19 problem, right? Um, so look at the early impact. Um, uh, let's see. I think what's really important to take away from this is that what was being reported were sort of two things. Um, continuity of education was really a concern. Like, how are we going to continue connecting with students during this time? Um, and the inequitable access to digital learning, all right? That's the digital divide. Uh, long term, um, I think people were already predicting that we weren't going to come back to the normal after after this was done, however long that was going to take. Um, people, I think, even though there were challenges, there was a general shift towards digital learning already happening. And um, after, it was more likely that this was going to be integrated in their into their routine, making it harder for them to come back to school. So I think we've kind of seen that a little bit, right? Um, I've dumped a lot of information in here, so I'm trying to kind of like, because I know we have a whole part of her for Maria, so I don't want to take all that time, but I want to make sure that you guys are getting some of this, the, the important bits of uh, what we found. Um, yeah, so what's going to make, so yeah, again, through that literature review process, two things were, two main themes emerged, again, the continuing continuity of education and digital inequality. I really want to emphasize that this de digital navigator concept is a direct response, is a um, is a tool to combat you know the, the problems with digital inclusion and digital equity that we're having. This is not just an intervention just for emergency remote teaching and disconnection from um, tech skills, right? One of the other big things that uh, was made evident was that while a lack of online learning design was not necessarily surprising, um, that shift to remote remote learning revol um, excuse me revealed gaps in both teachers and students' digital literacy skills. Um, so we can skip through goals. So this is focused on one local response, namely the Highlands uh, response to this. Um, just for context, um, Highlands students are 87% uh, uh, English language, 92% uh, free or reduced lunch. Um, 
So, so these services, um, we were doing, let's see, we were trying to address this problem with volunteers and they were doing things like Google Classroom, uh, internet uh, connectivity, email and Zoom. Uh, 800 Chromebooks were, were uh, distributed by late April and then 2000 between March and September, 2020. Those were for, uh, through the uh, volunteers. Um, so let's look at this one. 87% of teachers at that time were reporting that they were having more trouble with technology troubleshooting than they did before the pandemic. This was the big number that stood out to me. Okay, and that's why I I found this really alarming. And we were trying to figure out what we were going to do about this. So shifting to digital learning caused a lot of problems. Um, put students in an unfamiliar territory. And so we wanted to address that directly. So my view on this was that we wanted to remove the technical barriers in first language uh, so that they could connect with their subject matter experts, their teacher. Right. We didn't want to put the language barrier on top of the digital barrier. Um, and so we wanted to address that uh, as a priority, language support. So based on a model that we worked on uh, with partners and with NDIA across a working group, uh, we created a new position called Digital Navigator uh, to help the, the learners connect to technology and training. Um, and this was directly designed to free up teachers, their time, so that they can connect better with their students. So in this picture here, you can see um, <clears throat> the digital navigators working directly with students. Um, here, they're working with their, uh, their smartphones. Mm -hmm. That's actually one of our interns. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine that they're probably working in, in their first language. That's not true. So we'll talk a little bit about the, the DN role um, and how that, that was really designed for uh, student engagement, helping with the one-to-one -one digital devices, elevating digital literacy. Um, and upskilling the students, um, you know, that's that's important for future job uh, prospects, right? Um, trying to position them to to be digital learners, um, and also find jobs that might be uh, requiring these digital skills. Uh, looking at the long term impact on this, that might include entry or reentry into the workforce, career advancement, generational change. After we created the staff position, um, we worked on a CTE uh, component so that the students could actually go through a program that they would learn how to become a digital navigator and give them a, a chance to eventually get hired in that position or at other positions that were starting to emerge out in the community. And we call that community digital navigator. So the demand in the community is growing right now. Um, I just got back from the uh, Net Inclusion and the IA uh, conference. Everyone's talking about digital navigator. That this this field is growing. This this job market is growing. Um, I just got two emails yesterday with job postings in different cities around the country. So we're trying to meet this demand in an innovative way. Um, and I think we're going to go on to Maria. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Do you want to, you can ask. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, so a little bit of background. I actually had the opportunity to work as a digital navigator for a little bit over a year. Um, and then uh, during that time, Jerry was actually teaching and uh, you know facilitating the CTE class. And so given that I have that digital navigator uh, experience myself, then the opportunity opened up uh, for myself to take over the course. So here we're going to take a look at what it is that we're teaching these community digital navigator CTE students to help prepare them for that kind of a role. But even though in different capacities, as I mentioned before, the role will look different. It's really designed to mold and you know fit whatever the needs are of that organization and in the needs of you know the technological needs as well. So it'll look a little bit different um, at every job, but uh, this is what we're we're teaching our students. Um, so through a combination of coursework, uh, we actually use Google's uh, Applied Digital Skills online learning platform. We use that and we also integrate it in internship portion um, to the course. So students are gaining knowledge and skills that are going to help them, you know, re-enter uh, the workforce. And maybe this could be a like a, a new career pathway for them as well. So the course builds on students existing basic digital literacy skills. So they should already have some sort of familiarity with uh, technology. We don't expect them to be experts. We expect them to be able to perform the basics, like turn on a computer, check your email, know how to find something on the internet, because these basics are really fundamental to be able to help others, you know, do whatever it is they need to do, connect with their doctor, you know, through telehealth services, or like here at our school, um, connect with their teacher on Zoom, or log on to Google Classroom, or turn in an assignment, for example. And so through authentic learning opportunities, students learn how technology fits into everyday life, because that is our reality. And I believe that the pandemic made that even more true. We heavily relied on technology because that lack of human interaction we didn't have for a couple of years there. So now it's it's heavily integrated into everyday life. Uh, it's also an exploration into how digital tools can make their academic career, personal lives easier. And that's probably one of our bigger uh, focuses of the class. How can you use technology to help you achieve things, not only in your professional life, but also in your personal life? And so the uh, adult students pictured here enter the course with uh, basic computer skills. Um, we have a leveling system for uh, English at our school. So all of these students met at least level four of English. And um, to also supplement this, we've also been using um, North Star Digital Literacy Platform to be able to assess what level of digital skills are coming to us with. So uh, this, uh, since this course has been around for almost three years, probably, um, this course uh, has been helping our students apply their digital skills with confidence. They're able to help others with technology. Um, this gives them the opportunity to, you know, further their education and consider, you know, careers that they probably didn't get an opportunity to consider uh, before. So here we wanted to uh, share with you guys, uh, we have a few uh, video testimonials from a couple of students, just so you can hear from them and what their experience was like uh, through the class. <laughs> I am Harjit. I am from India. I learned many new skills regarding technology. This class enhanced my confidence. First and foremost, I like this class. The behavior of the teachers is magnificent and awe inspiring. I have constructive, productive, and breathtaking learning environment of the class. Yeah. 
Hopefully, you should be able to press the next. Yeah, I'm Harjit. I am from India. I learned many new skills regarding technology. This class enhanced my confidence. First and foremost, I like this class. The behavior of the teachers is magnificent and are aspiring. I have constructive, productive, and breathtaking learning. Okay, well, there was <laughs> there was a few more. <laughs> there was a few more, but I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Oh, maybe but can you I am Harji. I should hopefully show the playlist. I am Harjit. I am from India. I learned many. Yes, yes. Have this little thing I'm going to put um, underneath the video, the end class testimonials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Maybe go to Maria, your name, and then playlist. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think we can. Oh, there it is. I'm Harjit. I I learned many. Yes. Hello, my name is Slavik. I just moved to the USA. In these lessons, I learned a lot about how to work with different Google programs. What I especially like is that in the lessons of Maria, she is an excellent teacher. The material is very accessible and understandable, mm -hmm. even if you don't know very good English. Here you are always welcome and everybody ready to help with any questions not only in the digital skills but also is in any areas of your life so i recommend it to go and study of this course <laughs> hi everyone i'm saying i'm taking the digital skill program this is a very good program you can learn a lot of digital skill in the class. In fact, I got it. So everyone, if you want to learn more about it, just come. Hello, my name is Loreda Ramirez. I'm from Oaxaca, Mexico, and I am an English learner. Also, I found very important to um, apply to, for a digital navigator class, which is very important since in our future, besides English, technology is also important. Um, I learn more than just computer basic skills. I'm, um, I'm happy and thankful with Highlands for offering this program. My favorite part of the class was um, my drive. It's a very important tool. So I find out that I can open my documents in any computer and I like it because it saves my information directly to the app, like to my drive. Um, thank you to my teacher, Maria Carrasco, for all her hard work, also for be patient. And I think learning um, these skills is going to help me for my future to get a better job, to help my kids, to teach them what I learned. And to find more opportunities. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alma Guzman, and I am a student of Digital Navigator, which I consider important in my life. Since we are constantly involving within technology and the use of them using digital tools, but in daily life and in the professional for that very reason. One of the tools that I liked the most was Google Sites because I think it's important to know how to use the internet to publicize what we want and at the same time use it as a work tool. For this reason, I highly recommend this course 
since it will give you current tools that will they will help to enter the world of technology. I also thank the teacher Maria Carrasco, who is in charge of this great teaching project, being a person highly capable of transmitting knowledge and high human quality. Thank you very much, Maria. Okay, so somebody in the way. I. All right. <laughs> are you able to admit from the? Are you able to? I did. I just admitted somebody. Oh, just, thank I'll, you. Yeah. I'm not linked actually. I can I can monitor the chat, but I can't admit okay. people. Oh. Oh, okay. You know what? Where's the um? Just turn off the video. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Thank you. And maybe to turn off the sound. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay, we're back. <laughs> so that was just a few words uh, from our students and their uh, experiences. Um, we constantly try to get feedback from them. Uh, even through the internship portion, because we're constantly trying to find ways that you know we can improve. Uh, you know how students are accessing the materials, or if they might need any additional support. As well. Thank you. Uh, and so these are the two online learning platforms that I mentioned earlier. So this is what we use in the course. We heavily use Google's Applied Digital Skills Learning Platform, and more specifically, we use the Google Workspace training lesson. And those lessons um, go over how to use these tools right here. So Google Drive, Docs slides, sheets, um, and Gmail. In addition to that, um, we also add Google Sites. Um, that way, if um, students are, you know, interested in, you know, kind of having their own uh, online presence that's like aside from social media, you know, something that they can completely own, um, we also allow our students to create um, an e-portfolio in the class. You know, it's totally owned by them. After they leave the class, you know, they can continue to publish things or not, right? But we want to give them the basics of, you know, uh, knowing how to build your own online presence and managing it as well. In addition to that, we also use uh, the North Star Digital Literacy Online Learning Platform. All of our students, um, they get their own accounts for it. I always highly uh, encourage them to like after they go through the lessons, take assessments of North Star A, let them know you can always come back and review any of this kind of um, information. Um, that's one of the biggest questions that we get a lot. If I do this once, can I always go back and do it again, just, to, just in case I forget or if I would like to review? And I think that that's one of the one of the really great things about online learning platforms. As long as you have a capable device, access to internet, that's always going to be there for you whenever you need it. And recently, um, North Star has actually added a lot of lessons and assessments in Spanish as well. So if I get a student who maybe can read and write in English, but maybe their their speaking skills aren't so great you know um personally i still encourage them try your best to do either of these lessons they're both offered in spanish as well actually um try your best to do it in english but if it's not really if it's too difficult feel free to revert back into spanish um personally i'm okay with that because um the skills are the same just the terminology uh, might be a little bit different mm -hmm. yeah. 
Thank you. And so uh, using those online learning platforms, the benefit as well is that students get to walk away with certificates. Um, both of them, they provide you with the templates for it already. Um, so you can see on the left we have, that's an image of a North Star online learning certificate. And on the right, that's the students receive when they complete a lesson and turn in uh, a document um, through uh, Google's Applied Digital Skills. And we also highly encourage our students to, you know, put this kind of uh, certifications and information on their resumes so that, you know, they know that these are employable skills that they're gaining through the course. Lastly, here we have some uh, images and information about the internship portion of the course. So after students complete the course, then we set them up for a 40 hour internship with our digital navigators that we have at Highlands. Um, and during this 40 hour internship, our students gain hands on experience with uh, our onboarding processes. So we are a one-to-one -one school in terms of devices. And so when we get new students, we're uh, open enrollment. So we're getting new students every single day. And so the digital navigators play a really key role in helping us, um, you know, get that technology to our students. And so our interns actually get to experience that. They get to learn what the onboarding process is like. And most likely they actually went through it themselves. So I know that when they go through it themselves, they're not really sure you know, entirely what's happening. So the internship part really helps them understand this is the purpose of you receiving technology. And our goal here is for you to know and understand how to use it for your learning. And so onboarding for us, it's an introduction to using school devices. So this is where they come in and they learn, you know, what is their school email address? What's their login going to be? Uh, what are they going to be using in their classrooms? Nowadays, we use um, Edmentum a lot. Some of our classes still use uh, Google Classroom, Gmail, Zoom, um, Burlington English. Uh, we put learning chocolate, typing sites on there so our interns get to not only learn you know the reasoning why we do this but they also get to practice they also um, help us set up the devices for our new students <clears throat> and um, a lot of our students since they are english language learners um, they actually get to practice their uh, translation skills as well we get a lot of students who you know they're coming to us with zero english so uh, our interns get to, you know, help others in their own communities, you know, get acquainted with the technology that they're receiving from the school. Um, and they also get to practice customer service skills. Um, in my opinion, that's probably one of the most, um, probably one of the best things that they get to learn. Like, we want to make it a welcoming environment. Like, how do you greet someone when they come in the door? How do you tell them to wait patiently? You know, what if there's kids running around? What do you do? What do you say in those kinds of situations? So they really get to learn and practice customer service skills, practice their English language skills as well, because we get students who speak maybe 20 different languages coming in every single day. Collaboration skills, this is truly a, a group effort to be able to make this, you know, go smoothly. And they really get a feel for working in, you know, what a digital navigator environment um, could be like. Uh, the photo on the left, um, the young woman with the white jacket, she was actually our first student hire. Um, she went through the class, she graduated with her high school diploma with us, and uh, she applied, and we hired her, and she's still there with us um, today, and, uh, and she was part of the first group, right, the first group that actually took the course as well, and then on the right, uh, you can't see her face, but the young woman who's sitting next to the gentleman, she was also um, one of our students, part of that first group. Um, of the students who took the course, graduated with us, um, and applied. And then the gentleman next to her, that's another intern. 
So it's really like a cycle of, you know, we're trying to set up students um, with the tools that they'll be needing. We give them the internship opportunity so that they get a feel for what the job is going to be like. That way when they graduate um, and if the job is posted on EdJoin, they would definitely be more than welcome to apply. Yep. Oh, awesome. So here we're just showing, you know, the things that they're learning here, including the internship, and it also helps support the school. Our school is constantly growing, so that means it's constantly hiring and it's constantly in need of people who can provide that technology support, especially in different languages. And uh, here, yeah. And I think that was it for me <clears throat> or either of us. I would want to say before we <laughs> that the initial hires were internal hires or civics that were hired that spoke specific languages that we were looking to support, top three languages. Um, at Highlands were Russian, Spanish, and Farsi, Dari. So we targeted those for that first round. Um, as of now, I believe there's nearly 10 languages supported, nine, maybe 10 most. Um, and we they've added now Cantonese, um, Romanian, Ukrainian, um, and I believe, yeah, Pashto. So there's, I mean, it, the, the list keeps growing and that, that list, can also fluctuate in demand, right? So right now we're seeing a lot higher in Sacramento, at least a higher influx of Ukrainian speaking mm -hmm. folks. Um, and some of the other ones that were higher up have kind of leveled out a little bit more. So keeping an eye on that and, the, and who's enrolling is really important. So one thing that I would take away from this experience would be to really be intentional about if you're interested in doing something like this, be really intentional about finding out exactly who your students are, trying to find folks from the community or former students to do that work, train them up um, and connect them because that's going to be really important on um, that, that language piece. I think it gets often overlooked. I've seen a lot of different models around the country. Um, that's not always a focus. And um, we've seen that it proved to be really, really, effective in this case so um i know we're a little bit short but that's kind of that's kind of yeah.